shoot. Hi, I'm the Morelander and this is Morelander EDC. Now unfortunately, the content that I wanted to make today, it's, yeah, it's, well, it's very, it's a very wet day, put it that way. Um, so I thought, how about we make some content that I know you wanted me to make. This comes directly from a comment from Vulva Laws uh, from a few weeks back. Uh, where they asked specifically about EDC pens. And I thought, yeah, that's an awesome video. And I've got everything that I need here in my pencil case or pen case. Um, so what I will do is I'll turn the camera around and we'll have a look at what's in here while I'm doing that. If at any point you find you're enjoying this video or you'd like to like, then hit that like button. If you'd like to see more from me, then again, you know, mash that subscribe button, the bell notification and share if you'd like to. That would be awesome. But for now, let's turn the camera around so you can see more of my EDC pens. Okay, so I thought the easiest way to do this would, you know, literally just be to empty them all out. Now, I'm not going to go through these in any particular order apart from the first one. So this is the classic Bic pen. One of the comments when I was talking about uh, with these with Zolvala, sorry, um, somebody when you know pens would be awesome, but not these super ridiculous like Mont Blanc kind of pens that people can't actually really purchase. Every single thing here is is a bargain. <laughs> um, and possibly you could class as a budget pen. Now, as far as budget pens go, the original or the, the classic Bic, it's, I mean, they're everywhere. You can pick, pretty much pick them up from any supermarket. You can pick them up from, well, uh, yeah, pretty much anywhere. They write great. If you wanted to refill them, you could refill them, but you, know, you don't really need to refill them, mainly because they're so cheap. Um, this is one of the newer ones, obviously, with the, the hole in the end because those silly kids in the 90s kept swallowing them. Um, but as far as pens are concerned, you really can't go wrong with just the classic Bic Biro. This is one of the medium versions. I generally prefer to write with a medium nib rather than fine. Um, I don't know why. Uh, I find it's less scratchy. I find it rolls just a little bit better. I'm not really concerned with doing anything that is uh, super fine. Um, but the reason that I thought I'd do this one first mainly is because rather than going into specifics as you know, let's ha this is this millimeters by this millimeters. Um, in fact, let's do the Fisher Space Pen next. I just thought it would be easy with the the Bic Biro because I, I dare say there isn't a person on this planet that hasn't used one of these Biros. So it'll be a good idea of just roughly how big the other pens are. So the first two that I've got here, mainly because, you know, let's, see, let's just move those there for a second, because I have two of these. Um, this is the Fisher Space Pen. So the Fisher Space Pen is a really small, compact, and as far as EDC is concerned, these are super EDC friendly. You take the uh, you take the cap off, put the cap on the end, and when it's on there, you can see it's roughly the same size as a pen. And these are great. They use a pressurized. Oops, I'm just, I thought that was bigger than that. They use a pressurized cartridge on the inside, so these can write in in any way. So it's, you know, sometimes when you have to write on a wall, or there's something you need to write on, or you, you have to write at a strange angle, and your your pen doesn't feed the ink through. Uh, that's how these work. You know, it, it purely works on um, gravity. Well, with these you can write on any surface in any direction and they're just great to have now it so happens oh i'm just stand up a second it so happens that i'm carrying today one of these small slips and the best thing about these is when you have a small slip like this they just fit perfectly in on the side this is a slip from steve c designs i'll leave a link for his uh, instagram um, in the in the link below but these really are perfect for these also if you're a bit of a fidgeter the fisher space pen is a great pen to fidget with they um they really are good so that's the first one and as i say no, not in any sort of particular order so there's that's possibly one of the smaller ones or the smaller pocket 
um, pens that I carry. Now it, it would make sense if I went on then to these. So this is the... Now in English I would pronounce this as Quarko but these are a German made pen from a German company so I'm guessing that W is actually a V so it's it's Quarko. Um, and these again are really really pocket friendly and this is the sport version so they do quite a few different versions of their own pens you know um, but these are the plastic sport versions so it's got an a, a, a tail cap press which you know just pokes that out to make sure um, that you can you can write with it the, to get to the refills you just unscrew the end uh, and then you can get the refill in there as well. They're very simple as far as the way that they're made So and, and this is one of the reasons why these also make a great pen When you're writing with this you often get those pens that you find that you get in banks that are just short ones And you, you end up trying to have to hold it like that But f for my medium to large size hands um, They fit in just enough so I also still get some support from the back of my thumb there in that saddle joint to be able to um, actually write with them um, and these are great these two if you compare these to the Fisher Space Pens these are also really good and really pocket friendly the other difference with these Quarko Sports is they come in a large variety of different colours so if you're the type of person that has um, a certain you know I like themes I like a an X color carry then these are great for that I think they also do a fountain pen version of the smaller sport like this they also do a uh, drawing pencil which has a large um, bit of um, the lead that comes out although I think I think it's graphite nowadays isn't it um, and they're great and they also do which is really nice I haven't got one yet but they do a copper version of this um, so you get you get that nice patina to it after a while. So that is the Gvorko Sport. After that, oh, actually let's compare it so you can see it's not that much smaller, but as far as the width is concerned, the Sport is quite meaty in your hand. Now after that, where should we go next? Now these these are screaming out to me mainly because I have so many of these because I, I just I just use them a lot um, but this is the classic 1980s um, Bic four colour still made in France still have those four colours that you select now back in the 80s if you had one of these pens you were in the cool gang and there's still something nostalgic about having pens like this and for me to carry pens like this in the 80s it wasn't about whether you had the iPhone whatever it was about whether you had one of these and if you had one of these you were definitely one of the cool kids so you know I just yeah there's definitely a nostalgia hit with these so they have the four colors the barrel opens um, you can now buy refills for these so like if you can see there this black one is pretty much run out um, so you can now buy refills for these um, the original one came in the blue like this but these are two extra ones that I managed to find this is my I call it my Darth Vader version, it isn't sponsored by and has absolutely no connection with Star Wars but it's all black, look at that, it looks amazing. Um, and the best thing, especially with these that I've found recently, actually we'll just compare those to a, to a normal Bic Biro, is that they do these smaller versions of them. So as far as EDC is concerned, these are even better. Um, because they just fit so perfectly into your pocket. If we compare one of these smaller ones to the Fisher Space Pen and the Sport, you can see that they're all of a similar size. Um, some of those pouches that you have that don't fit in a full-sized pen, you can fit in one of these smaller Bic 4 colours and they're just so useful to have mainly because you've got those four colours, blue, green, black and red in there that you can use when you choose to. I just wish Bic would do 
a stainless steel all metal version one of these I'd take that thing everywhere with me um, I don't have a favorite pen a, a favorite pen I promise I don't have a favorite pen <laughs> um, so that is the Bic four color um, this one is a zebra pen I actually won this in a giveaway and um, yeah, I wasn't expecting much from it but I do use it quite a bit so it's a telescopic one hopefully as you'll see as the as the um, the barrel pulls back it releases the ink on the end um, super useful for writing with another great small one when you think comparing this to the Fisher space pen which is probably the smallest one that I have and then comparing it to just a standard Bic Biro but when I pull it out you know it's roughly the same size roughly the same size uh, as one of these Bic 4 colours and this is great it's super super useful plus you tend to find with a lot of pens nowadays they have the, um, the nib on the end so that you can use it with your mobile phone if you choose to so that's a, that's a great little pen um, <clears throat> then coming on to some of the more durable pens, so the Parker Jotter, the Parker Jotter for me is the quintessential writing implement. I had one of these when I was at school, I had one of these all the way through college and I still have one now. Out of all of these pens, the Parker Jotter is the pen that I've probably owned the most, I've probably owned the most of. And I've also probably lost the most of. Um, I've had, I mean, phew, I probably had 20, 30 of these pens and lost 28 of these pens. So I have two at the moment, mainly because I thought I'd lost one and bought another one and then um, realized that I hadn't. But you know, it's always great to have the Parker Jotta. The beauty of this it is it uh, fully stainless steel. You can open up the barrel. As far as the Parker refills are concerned, you can pretty much get these anywhere, any supermarket, any stationery store around the world. Um, you can pick up refills for these um, and they're very cheap as well. They're not particularly expensive or at least the, the refills are. For the Parker Jotta, there's quite a few different versions. You can get ones that you know have a plastic shaft and then the, the bit on the end, um, the, the, the clicking mechanism is metal or you can get all metal like this and somebody's shown me there is actually a Parker Jotter XL I probably should have waited because I've, I've just ordered one through, through Amazon but as soon as I get one of those I'm gonna be making some content on it but they're all similar you might see actually if I can get this up if it will let's see if I can get this to focus you might see that the arrow fletchings are slightly different on both of these I don't know if that is a year thing or maybe a manufacturing thing if they were made slightly different um, but you know it's, it's kind of cool that there is a subtle difference between the two but other than that you know they work exactly the same way um, and the Parker Jotta really is I, I'll, I mean I'll say it again it's the quintessential writing implement for me I love the Parker Jotta after that um, you've got the zebra pen now the zebra pen has kind of got that kind of reputation for the um, the tactical self defense um, writing implement see a lot of these tactical pens that if need be you know you could you could use for self defense and the the zebra pen or at least there's two versions of this so this is the the FX MD and the predecessor to this was the was the F seven hundred and one or seven hundred one. So the seven hundred one had a few plastic parts on there, and there was some there was some plastic bits to it that people were like, well, you know, I want a fully all metal stainless steel pen, and that's where the F X M D came in. So if you were to compare the two of them, like for like, they pretty much are exactly the same pen, apart from you know you get some plastic bits around here and here the the FXMD is the all metal version of the original F701 which comes open at the end uh, you have a refill on the inside the refills again for these zebra pens are very easy and simple to come by they're not particularly expensive as well um, but the reason that this garnered a bit of excitement as far as uh, how useful it would be for self-defense is just how thick this shaft is now 
I do need to double check this, mainly because um, the original piece of content that I made on this, though, there, there was a lot of people saying that if you were to cut through this shaft, you'd find that there's actually an insert here that goes into that, and then here the shaft isn't it isn't as thick. From, just from the weight of this, I'd probably tend to believe that because it's not a particularly heavy pen, considering this might be say two millimeters worth of stainless steel on either on either side um, but if you were in a pinch and you need to use something as a, a tactical style self defense self defense pen I think the zebra FX MD would certainly help any of these pens to be fair the the, the jotters would make a, a, a good self defense pen if you needed to uh, just to take the um, the Jotter and the Zebra pen next to each other, you can see the sizes. If I put the Bic next to them, you can see the size there. You know, they're all roughly the same. Now, the last two that I've got on here, hey, let's face it, when it comes to pens, and it comes to EDC, I, the, I, the, there's, there's no snobbery. <laughs> and these are pens these are the ones that you get for free you know you go to a show you walk around somebody says do you want to try my pharmaceuticals w w wait actually so i work in the pharmaceuticals industry i don't go around taking drugs um but you know I, i'm lucky enough that two or three times a year i get to travel abroad to go to some medical symposia and people are always giving out these pens you go to a hotel there's these pens so there's nothing embarrassing about saying hey I like this pen, it's orange. I thought this one had got like a really cool pocket clip kind of thing. I picked it up and I was like, yeah, that one's awesome. This one was sent to me by Tasmanian Tiger. Um, here in the UK, I'm one of Tasmanian Tiger's uh, UK ambassadors and this was in something that they sent me and I was like, that's cool as heck. It's one of the twisty ones, so you twist it for it to come open. It's got a bit of Tasmanian Tiger info on there and there should be no snobbery around EDC and there is you know like so, somebody mentioned around you know some people carry pens that are 150 euros or 200 dollars and that's great but you should never look down on somebody else for carrying one of the cheapest pens that you can get or carrying a pen that was given to you for free um, and I think with all of the pens that I have here, I've got a bit of a selection between different types, different sizes, different um, you know materials that they're made from. These are all plastic. These are all metal. And yeah, there you go. There's there's my there's my pen collection. Now, as far as having a favourite pen is concerned, I don't really have a favourite pen. Um, there, there's some that I like aesthetically over the others, but there, there isn't really a pen that I always go to that I like to use a lot. Like most of my knives and different EDC items that I carry, I generally have some sort of rotation that, I mean, there's, there's no Monday this, Tuesday that, Wednesday this, it's more of just, you know, a lot of the time it really is just pure luck, I, I put my hand in the pencil case, grab one. Sometimes if I've got a specific carry, like you know, I've mentioned with a slip, then I'll, I'll use one of the Fisher ones or you know, a smaller one that fits in there. But a lot of the time it's just grab a pen. I think whether you're going fully digital in the digital age that we live in now, you know, you've got a nice tablet, you've got one of those uh, pens that you can write on there. There's no getting around the fact that just being able to make notes Something happens, you think, right, okay, I just need to write something down. Heavens forbid you, you see an accident that somebody speeds away from. Just to be able to get a pen out of your pocket, write it down on your arm, or do whatever you need to do. Maybe it's medical incidents, somebody's put a tourniquet on and you need to give them a pen. I don't know, there's lots of different things, but having a pen in your pocket is definitely super useful and um, is, you know, it's, it's great to have. Um, in case for emergencies. I mean specifically for me, you know, I walk around a lot and I get mobbed by fans, you know, wanting to come up and meet the Moorlander and you know, it always gets really awkward when their pen doesn't work and somebody wants me to sign their baby's forehead or their breasts or something, but uh, Sharpies are always good as well for that sort of stuff, but um, yeah, it's uh, it's good. It's good to have a pen with you. It's also good to put your phone on silent. That was my, that was my phone quacking. Um, 
So, <laughs> that, that one put me off for a second there. I'll leave some links in the description below. The links will be to, to any of those pens. Uh, you know, if you choose to purchase them, I'll put some affiliate links in there. You know, it, it just gives me, my channel, a little bit of kickback. It's no, to no extra cost to you. There'll be some of my social media links below. Uh, if you have enjoyed this content, then please like, share. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share. That would be awesome. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. But for now, stay safe, stay in Warlander, and stay EDC.